stairs. Plenty of stairs. <laughs> oh, Plenty no. of stairs. I know it. Yeah, no, so, so this month, um, February, is, of course, Black History Month. And so we decided, um, even though we, we do often cover black history topics throughout the year, that specifically in February we are every single Friday going to be focusing on a different place of importance in Marietta's black history. So today... Well, and last year we didn't oh yeah. do this in February. We didn't start till March. So That's right. It, so That's it's right. a perfect opportunity. That's right. This is our first Black History Month it is, yep. of History Loves Company. Yes. So yay. And we're going to start it off at some place that is really a treasure in our community. And um, well, I'm really excited to show you guys around here. Um, we're going to wait a few more minutes or? No, I think we're good. So um, everybody, what I'm going to do is turn the camera around so you actually get a beautiful view because I can see it and Amy can see it. And Amy is going to introduce a very special guest. Yes. Who is going to introduce all of you to the history <laughs> of this beautiful Cole Street Bap Missionary Baptist Church. Yes. I want to get that Cole correct. Cole Street Missionary Baptist Church. That's right. That's right. All so, right. So I'm going to walk over to you. Yep. I'm going to turn the camera around. Here you go, guys. You ready? Yeah, I'm not going to turn the camera back, oh, but they'll okay. see me in a minute. And then today we have, as Krista said, a very special guest. Um, he is a member of our Diverse Pop Advisory Committee at the museum, and uh, it's been my pleasure to get to know him um, personally as well over the last uh, year or two. And this is Reverend Larry Purvis, um, who is a pastor here at the church. And um, we just wanted to invite you to, before we get started roaming around, well, first off, thank you. Yes, I'm thank you. I know, right? I know, I saw that. I was just getting a little closer to him. because. I know, yeah. Good. So you want me to get to the mic over here? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
both these gentlemen are, are white Christians, mm -hmm. and so that kind of went along with our theme, mm -hmm. one in the spirit. That's right, one in the spirit. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's how um, we celebrated uh, in lieu of the pandemic and, and all the restrictions that are going on. And Young Life is here now, too. And young Life is up there, yes, yeah. and um, we were very close with Merritt High School and West Cobb. Yes. And um, that Young Life affiliation out of my relationship with this person that I met about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we still, as a matter of fact, last church anniversary, if I can do all things through Christ, mm -hmm. and we hope that Young Life came and celebrated our 133rd church anniversary. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so, I, I love that that this, because you, you need to keep the youth involved. You know, absolutely. To, to, just to keep your, your organization going, your church going. Um, and in particular, you, I know you told me a couple days ago about the the young mothers, yes. the um, um, young mothers, and that you passed through to them at the high school, married the high school. Well, that was wonderful. Well, young life, and then there's wild life, which is middle school. Oh, wow. Okay. And then they came up with young lives, uh -huh. <laughs> which is young ladies who have become pregnant while in high school. Mm -hmm. And so they coach them, assist them, mm -hmm. encourage them to complete high school to get education. So, That's wonderful. Wonderful program. Yes. What is your history here? When did you start at the church here? My wife and I came back in 2004 mm -hmm. under the previous pastor, Pastor Leon Grant. Okay. And we had worked together in, you know, street ministry. And so I came back to be the youth pastor at, That's right. at 50-some years old. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you, you moved here for IBM, right? Or Initially in 85. Oh, in 85. Okay. In Colorado, my wife and I came from Boulder, Colorado. Okay. Here. We stayed for 97. Yeah. And then we moved to Austin, Texas. In 2004, we came back. Okay. And so in 2004, I came in as a youth pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of young life and all those things. In 2006, we decided to take a uh, to leave and kind of, you know, take, we had a, we need to take a break. Mm -hmm. And so um, I became the pastor in 2006. That's wonderful. And you, you jumped right in. And was it before that time or at that time when you really started up your ministry over in the community, out in the community? I know you mentioned Roosevelt Circle and, and that, that. My involvement with Roosevelt Circle started in probably 1988. Okay, right. I was in Zion. Okay. And at the time there was a lot of activity going on in Roosevelt Circle. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. And a lot of the kids were having problems in school. Mm -hmm. So when I left IBM in 1992, I started a program called ASAP. The superintendent that was Roy Nichols. Mm -hmm. And Roy actually hired me as a consultant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. And I was able to go to the, the family that had a child that was having problems in school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and actually assist them with getting the kid back to school on track. Good. And then, so when I met Young Life, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was another way of just enhancing mm -hmm. the whole program. And so my involvement with Young Life, I mean, with the Roosevelt Circle goes back to 1987 to 85. Yeah. Doesn't feel like that long ago, but I mean. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm committed to this neighborhood. I mean, you are, yeah. and you have such an impact on especially the youth and just the community as a whole. I know that this church has got from, Krista and I have just scratched the surface on the, the deep history that just this church and its members have had since the very beginning. Um, so you know we're gonna we're gonna be able to highlight some of those today, and um, I think I think maybe some things you didn't even know. You know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> but um, but thank you again for having us and letting us roam around today and kind of explore. I, I know for a fact this is one of the old churches in Marietta that many people drive by, and if they're they're not a member, that you know they never come in. So often, and if they're anything like me. Mm. You always want to go in and see what does it look like inside. You know what's going on inside, and so um, this is this is gonna be fun. Well, Amy, it's truly been a pleasure working with you, and this is again with a godsend. <laughs> it is. I it just hear the history of the church with so many wonderful people that we yes. met and families that are all over the country, yeah. and so we're just yeah. grateful and thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so we are gonna get into some of the history of this parish, and. Um, Let's see, well, the, 
the care started, um, or he, well, do you refer to it as a care? This is an old Catholic girl. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what do you refer to it as? How do, yeah, what's the it, word? It, 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 <laughs> Oh, family. family. Church, congregation. Yeah. That's, That's the word. I want to make sure I'm using the proper word. No. All right, so congregation. So the congregation broke off of Zion Baptist, which was just right up the street, mm -hmm. in 1887. Yep. And Zion started, so the original members here in this church were really probably original members of Zion because Zion started in eight. Well, I think they got their first approval to become a separate church in 1854 from the First Baptist in Marietta. But they were enslaved at that time. Mm -hmm. So they were approved to form their own, and by approval, I mean, you know, given permission by their enslavers to form a separate church, um, separate community. <clears throat> and so then they kind of already had a community going um, and at uh, when the war ended and emancipation came, they were able to truly be free from the First Baptist Church and create Zion, which I believe was formally started in 1866. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? That sounds right, okay. yeah. And then, so 1866, you've got Zion is formed. And then in 1887. Yep. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming with it. So 20 years later, you've got a group from that uh, congregation who wants to break off. Um, we haven't found the, the reasons why, and we know how churches break off, so who knows the exact Misunderstanding why. was the Misunderstandings, word. Misunderstandings, yes. right? Um, difference of opinions, probably. Um, and so they came down here and started Cole Street in 1887. Now, something interesting that I really didn't realize, so in 1887 they start Cole Street. They don't have a building yet. 1888 is when the old Zion Church is built. So that church is thriving and, thri and building that beautiful church that we have up there. And then one, within another year, 1889, they build this one. So really, these two church buildings are about the same age, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting to me. But um, Zion, of course, Old Zion has been preserved as a museum. I believe it's appointment only. But, um, but you know, this one, and, and it, I think they still have some events in there, but the fact that this church is just as old and is still a working church it's you know it's still um you know busy and live and not mm -hmm. um closed most of the time so um some of the earliest members though there's there are a list of them and one in particular stuck out and I, i'm gonna actually hold on for a second on. somebody just asked um the stained glass window behind you do we know if it was locally created that is the question it was a a, a firm out of birmingham so if you guys didn't catch that, Sheena, he just said it was a firm out of Birmingham. So it is a regionally created piece. Yes, but it's not old. It's that's a new, or not as old as the building. Right. About yeah. six years old. About six years old. So we are going to get into the details of the architecture of the church and what's left and what's been renovated over the years um, in just a little bit. And so, yeah, well, I'll point out the stained glass because there's other stained glass in here. And behind me, actually, it didn't look anything like it does now. Um, for many years when it was first built. So um, we'll get into that in just a minute. But first, I want to talk a little bit about a really um, fascinating and exceptionally important story in our black history for our county and for our state, uh, and really for the nation, mm -hmm. that we uncovered, um, or Krista uncovered, while uh, doing some research this week. So um, you well, want me to come I, around there? I will uh, switch. Well, we're going to do a loopy loop. Loop de loop. loop. All right. All right, guys, if anybody has any trouble hearing me, just let me know. That's why I kind of stepped back, Amy, in, when you were talking in hopes that I didn't Did you turn your mic back on? I did turn mine back on. We're, making, we're trying to make sure, everybody. All right, so um, in the city cemetery, I have done um, tours where we talked about, where I talked about Thomas Milton Allen, Reverend Thomas Milton Allen, who was the uh, second, second reverend here. But his story... Um, again, is one that I'm cons constantly trying to find more information. Um, per our normal History Loves Company, I found great information about two hours ago. You hit the jackpot today. I hit the jackpot. I'm very <laughs> excited by this. So um, he's born into slavery in, 18, in the 1830s. But what is very interesting is there is a document from the 18, uh, early 1880s, or excuse me, 1871, my apologies. 1871, 
that he goes and he is talking to a subcommittee on um, the conspiracy of the Ku Klux Klan within Georgia. And the reason I'm gonna refer to this multiple times is he kind of goes a little bit into his life. So he's born enslaved in the 1830s and it says, um, where were you born? He goes, I was born in Charleston. And where do you live now? And he says, Marietta. How long have you been living in this state? He goes, I came to the state uh, the year that James K. Polk died, around 1849. And the question goes, how do you connect your coming here with his death? Yeah, who goes, really ever pays attention I, to James K. Polk? I didn't. <laughs> uh, if you don't know who that is, he was a president. In <laughs> he landed in... And no, Polk Street was not named after him. No, it didn't. <laughs> um, he goes, I... Uh, I landed in Savannah at the time they were firing a cannon there and asked what's the matter and they said that the president had died. The next question, were you a slave? His answer, partly so. Hmm. Mm. That was that stumped mm. us for a second. Yes, it did. Um, my father was a white man and he set us free at his death. They, I don't know who they is, stole us from Charleston and run me and my brother and mother into this state. He, their father, left us $10,000 each to educate us and give us trades. And for that money, they stole us away. So, yeah, so basically they were given their freedom and some money from, from their master, essentially, the man who enslaved them and fathered them. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then we don't know who they are, but we, one guess we were throwing out there was possibly some siblings or somebody who knew, obviously, what the, they were getting money. And, yeah. and and brought them uh, over state lines where nobody would know them and so if they sat there and tried to claim that they were free no one would believe them right exactly um, were you kept in slavery until the time of emancipation answer yes sir I was held as a slave I hired my time now when he says I hired my time he did not hire his time his enslaver hired his time out so mm -hmm. he ended up uh, Reverend Allen ended up being sent out to other places and what he ends up doing is um, first he ends up being a shoemaker mm -hmm. um, so when he's emancipated his trade is a shoemaker but also in this amazing 10 page document these are his words uh, which every time I read something like this it just gives me goosebumps to be able to read some of these actual words mm -hmm. versus oh so and so said he said this but right no this is what he said he goes in and he talks about how um, even during his enslavement, he was preaching. And he was preaching to other slaves and telling them about the gospel because it, it, as it reads, he, was, he did have an education and was able to read. So he was preaching the word even before his emancipation. Mm -hmm. So when he's emancipated, he ends up in Jasper County, Georgia. So, okay, everybody, there's <laughs> Jasper in North Georgia, and then there's Jasper County in Middle Georgia. If you guys know where Monticello is, that's like the county seat. So he's in Jasper, Georgia with his wife and children. Um, some of the children and his wife, they were enslaved as well. But uh, he ends up running for Georgia legislature in 1868. This is the first time African Americans were able to uh, run for office in a big election year. They have the right to vote. And he won he runs and he wins. Now he's running on the Republican ticket, but it's very important to remember the Republican Party of the 1860s is more of the like the Democratic Party today. So it's well, it's very different from the Republican Party of sure. the 1960s. For sure, yes. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, very different. Um, so he, Reverend Allen, along with 32 other African American men, are elected into the Georgia legislature. Uh, they're called the Original 33, and there is a monument outside of the Georgia State Capitol dedicated to them. Um, of those 33, 24 were reverends. So that's very important, and it speaks volumes because the reverends after the war are gonna be the men who are educated, but also the men who are going around and telling people, you know, this is what your rights are now. This is, you can vote, and they know all these things. So again, put, having them on the ticket is gonna be uh, very, very important. But also during that same year, that first year that they're in office in 1868, um, they're pretty much denied the right to serve because they were, deemed by whites as not being 
natural born citizens because enslaved people weren't deemed natural born they, citizens. Well, they weren't deemed citizens. Citizens, citizens yeah. of the United yeah. States. So that forces some of them out of office, but it also forces this really um, kind of like a powder keg of, uh, post-war is powder keg, but this whole powder keg of, of conflict between uh, the educated black men and white men who don't want to be represented by any black person, educated or not. So he ends up serving his two-year term in Jasper, but during that time he is threatened. At one point, uh, members of what was then the Klan, am I not loud enough? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, members of the Klan actually come to his house at two in the morning with the precursor that they need a light because there's something up in a tree that they need to get. Well, uh, who needs something in a tree at two o'clock in the morning? No. Sometimes I do. Uh, <laughs> you never know. Unless your dog's up there or a cat. Like, I don't need a light person like that. But anyway, I digress. So he says, uh, Reverend Allen says, well, I don't have any matches. Why don't you have matches? Legitimate question. Mm -hmm. Well, what ends up happening is Reverend Allen's brother-in-law says, I'll get them a, a torch in essence. And he lights a torch, goes out to the front porch, and they kill him, shoot him dead, exactly. thinking that he's Thomas Allen. Mm -hmm. And so he recounts this. What year was that? It, uh, this was in 1860, or no, 1870. 1870. Okay. So he, at that point, too, remember, it's two years, he was going to, he was up for re-election as well. Mm. So this whole threat is happening. And again, um, they're scared he might get reelected, and are, so and they want to assassinate very, him. Mm -hmm. That's when you see the beginning of voter suppression mm -hmm. in the South. Is, Absolutely, is really eighteen that 1868, 1870. Mm -hmm. They try and suppress his vote to vote for president. He, um, they try and they, they don't try. They succeed in getting him out of that Monticello Jasper area. He leaves with his family in 1872 and comes back here to Marietta. Um, he talks a little bit about Cobb County, and he talks about how it's very, um, very astute what he realizes. He goes, in these southern counties where the black is majority and the white is minority, that's where you saw a lot of the struggle. And he said, Cobb County, it's the opposite. It was white majority, black minority. And that's why he goes, he, he refers to it as more peaceable, and there's not as much clan influence. Well, the but Klan was certainly here. Certainly here, but it wasn't. He's saying it's not the same as South Georgia mm -hmm. or Middle Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's what he was. Because there's more of a threat because exactly. to the whites, the whites see it as more of a threat with the with the larger black population. Right. So, um, one thing. Yes. Uh, this 1890 yeah, we'll paper. Well, or I can just switch oh, the no, camera over. Yeah, you don't have to move. Hi. Hi guys. So one of the things that I did find because I was looking all over the Marietta Daily Journal just for any stories about um, Cole Street Baptist Church, and. Um, what you can't see? No, him? You'll oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna switch it in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. You don't need to it's see. It's okay. Me. Don't we go back that. and forth. So, um, but one, but it was hard. I didn't find a whole lot about um, Cole Street, or you know, I, maybe the search terms that I was searching for. You know, often we'll have to search for things but like Negro Church or right. Cole Street, but narrowing it down to this specific church. But it's was not unusual because the Marietta Daily Journal very rarely wasn't posting as much information about black. Right. History. Right. Well, exactly. History, so. Exactly. Um, one other resource that I will get to, um, but I didn't in time for today, is the Atlanta Daily World, although they didn't really start until the 1930s. Mm -hmm. So, but just to look for any kind of stories of, of anything, you know, um, good and bad, you know, of what, you know, the history of this, of this congregation. But one thing I did find um, about Reverend Allen was, um, let's see, this is September 18th, 1890. And this is the Marietta Daily Journal, and it's the, the headline is, The Republicans Nominate Mr. Spillman for the Legislature. Um, and it says, The Republicans of Cobb County held a mass meeting at the courthouse last Saturday afternoon. Preacher Thomas Allen, colored, was made chairman. A committee reported a platform which had a couple of things. It favored the nomination of a candidate for the legislature, so they figured out who they want to nominate. They wanted free coinage of silver. And that one kind of stumped me. I, I'm not familiar with what that means or why, you know, it wouldn't have been a you know, free coinage or why they wanted free coinage. We'll have to look into that. If anybody knows, feel free to comment. Um, 
they wanted pensions to old and infirm ex-slaves. Condemned, they, wanted, they were condemning the chain gang system. They favored nine months of free school. They condemned the jury system as discriminating against a large class of citizens. And they declared themselves to be un, unalterably opposed to secret political organizations. The resolutions were unanimously adopted. So he was still um, very active in, um, you know, gaining, um, you know, black rights um, and civil rights. And this is in the 1890s in Cobb County in Marietta. Okay, real quick, right? Yep. So you said that was 1890. Yes. In 1891, oh, okay. the family home was burned to the ground. Oh, boy. And was a complete loss of material possessions of the family. I'm not saying it has anything to do with it. Well, it probably it was with his political, oh, absolutely, his political um, activities, uh, I'm sure. But what he did, and the, the property was actually on Potter Springs Road. So if you guys know where that area is by my, where he's buried, the city cemetery, that road going all the way down, it does actually go down to Potter Springs. Mm -hmm. um, he did, however, rebuild on the 40 acres of land that he owned and continued farming until his death, which is um, April 11th, 1909. Okay. So, and then he does have a birth date on his tombstone, and it's February twenty second, eighteen thirty three. But that might have just been a date that was assigned. Um, it's a good date. I like that. But um, when he celebrated, when his family celebrated, exactly. Birthday, so, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, he he was um, pastor or reverend here until eighteen eighty five, and he also helped form uh, Pleasant Grove Baptist. Mm. And then in eighteen ninety, he formed Black Churches in the Kennesaw Baptist Association. So, oh, so Sardis probably up yeah. there and maybe Zion up in Kennesaw. And then he had, uh, I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven children. Hot dog. <laughs> Woohoo. I love big families like that. Yes, that is, yeah, that's, that's a really <laughs> big family. But again, I mean, guys, always, we're never stopping with our stories and trying to connect all the dots. Mm -hmm. um, and in this, this testimony that he's done, I mean, it. I've read it, but I'm gonna like really, really take right. It you literally it. just found it a couple hours ago. Yeah, and couple it's, hours like ago. you said, it's ten pages of, of a lot of information to absorb. So. So yeah. Um, yeah. It's very, very interesting. So. Great. Well, so that was you know one of the um, spotlights on one of the early members of the church, and I'm going to take the camera here now and take it off the stand, so that um, we can. We're going to look, take a look at the architecture of this church on the inside first, and then we'll go to the outside. Um, and let's see, Vicki. Hey, Vicki, I've seen some of your comments. Um, and uh, yeah, you're a longstanding member, and your mother, Miss Juanita, I hope she's doing well, and, and your family. She says, what is now located on the land of his family on Powder Springs Road? I would love to research the deeds of his land. I honestly don't know. Um, how far down Powder Springs Road? Um, I, that's just mm -hmm. what the story says is, is Powder Springs Road. I don't know how far. Yeah, we just found that today, right? That part I knew. Oh, you knew oh okay. From my cemetery yeah. tours, but yeah. I don't. I don't know where. I mean, it could be any stretch of. But you may be to able to find it if you look through the um, deed records at the courthouse. Um, yeah. I don't know how far back they go off the mm -hmm. top of my head, but um, yeah, check it out, Vicky. If you find out, let us know. Oh, good. Your mom's doing okay. well. Yay. Um, okay, Here. so I have, I printed off a couple of pictures. Um, that's the outside, we'll get to that in a minute, of the interior. So let's take a, a small stroll real quick um, around the interior of the church. As you come in, there's the front of it with the altar there. And then, I don't wanna make anybody uh, dizzy, but um, nice tall ceilings. And as I um, pan over here, you'll see some gorgeous stained oh, glass windows. You get the noise of my feet on this floor too. I know. Listen, make that noise, Krista. I love it. I love it. It's got so, a, I know there's a wood floor under here. Yes. So it's it's got a beautiful red carpet right now, but we're dying to rip up this carpet and see if there's some, some good old wood under there. Okay. Oh, do you want to um, yeah. So I'm just going to pan this around for a minute. Um, it, you know, it's it's surrounded by stained glass windows. And as Vicki mentioned earlier on in her comments, I did see that um, you said that, Vicki. Um, no, these are not original. And... The, the stained glass, the last set that was here, um, I, let's see, I've got some pictures. I don't know if they- Which one do you want? Let me see those, which two are those? Do um, yeah, no, well I will, but that one doesn't have the stained glass. You know, uh, I don't have it here, no, yeah. Good. But the older stained glass was replaced. Um, Reverend, did you say it was replaced a couple of- 
five or six years ago. Okay, so five or six years ago it was replaced because it was falling apart and they had to replace it. And um, but that stained glass, I mean, the, all the pictures that I've seen of the interior it was here. So I don't know if it was original, original to the 1888 building or if um, it came in a little bit later. But yeah, but it was old. It was old and beautiful. So um, as are these. So that's yeah. So there's been, you know, again, this this goes back to the point that I made earlier where. Z the old Zion Church is now a museum, so they have really mm -hmm. retained a lot of the original um, features of it. But this is still a working church, and so as with any working church, a lot of times you have to renovate and bring in new stuff just to you know keep it going. So um, a lot of this has been renovated, but um, I still yeah. feel like there's there's hardwood under. Oh yeah, there is. Right, Let's so look at these pictures. Hold on. Well, here, let me do it this way. Okay. So we can do like full on. So. Oh, wait, that's not it originally in the back there where you see that stained glass window it looked like this so they've got stairs up to the choir loft was at the top there it was a second floor choir loft with a beautiful organ in the back um, we do have um, in their published history the church has a a, a um, more like a paper of their history written and it talks about who donated that organ and a little bit specifics um, it was, um, he had a good name um, Columbus Robinson. Oh yeah, okay. And what was interesting is he, what I do know is he died in the 1920s. He's buried in the city cemetery, but mm. what he does not have is a marker. Oh, so okay. So I have his death certificate that says city cemetery. Mm -hmm. So he might be in what we call the um, the, the pauper's graves and just didn't have enough mm -hmm. for a marker. Yeah, um, okay. Here's a, another version. Of okay, the yeah, here's another version with the choir up top. And I think that's Hugh Grogan right down there at the bottom. I was wondering yeah, he, it looks like him. I, I didn't confirm that, but that's who it looks like. And um, so, oh, Vicky sang up there. I bet Michael did too. <laughs> oh, we see. I know. I don't know what year that was from. Yeah. Like, so yeah. So I'm gonna walk over here. The chairs look the same. Okay, from that those photos and maybe the it 70s. Yeah. Up. Um, and I just want to walk up here so you guys can see what's up here now. They've got their baptismal, would you call this a baptismal font or a bath? Pool. Or to, pool. pool, baptismal pool. All right, I'm learning all kinds of things today. <laughs> They've got their baptismal pool. And um, there again, there's that really pretty stained glass light there. And now the, the railing here, um, that matches those photos. So that's original railing, I believe. And then over here and then they now we're not going to walk through here but when you when you um are driving past you'll see sure yeah when you're driving past you'll see kind of an l-shaped um building coming out of the uh main sanctuary and that is their um fellowship hall and they've got offices upstairs so um we do have i did see a picture that um we can post on facebook of the older it was kind of an older home that was the fellowship hall there until the 70s or 80s i think right so <clears throat> okay we're gonna walk over this way hear that creaking i love that song. <laughs> it's so oh, love i know it I'm gonna go through the doors here okay got an entryway there's some stairs up to the loft that's up there now um, you know, I didn't go up here earlier or yesterday when I was here, um, to peek up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice space. All right. I had to look. I, I know. It looks like that. This is. All right. Then we are going to, I think this is the area, one of the doors that goes up to the bell tower. What's the proclamation? Yeah, so I just want to mention, um, so the present site purchased from uh, Miss Lucy Ann Jones, and I did um, research her. She had been born and, and enslaved in, as well, so. Oh, wow, yeah. okay, yeah. So um, some yeah. of her, this was her property originally. Yeah, Woo. all right, we're gonna come outside here. Now, one of those pictures that you have in your hand, um, if you notice, um, this front area here is enclosed. So where we would have walked out, we would have just seen this, I think it's just a window, not a door, and the doors were on the side, similar to the way the old Zion church is. Is but that now, what's over, like this little corner? 
earlier? Yeah. The, well, oh. no. This this yeah. the stairs here are original, but this oh. part right here would have had doors. It would have been um, enclosed. The area that we're in. Oh, but I this see. I see. this is the speaker I was talking about to Krista. Um, I asked what this speaker was for, and Reverend Purvis said that he had heard that someone put it in in the 40s to um, pipe out music and sermons to entertain the soldiers. So I don't know. Um, I couldn't find anything in the paper that talked about that, but I, I would love to know why there's a speaker right there. I feel um, very tall here because the ceilings yes, are low. Yes, yeah. Like, I'm not a tall person, but I like I know it. it. So let's walk down the stairs here, and then we're going to turn around so you guys can really see the, the beauty of the building itself. Um, there is a bell tower, but the bell is not there anymore. It's right here. Here's the original bell. Amy really tried to get in that bell tower, but they I let did. Us, not safe. <laughs> but what was interesting was, and I couldn't find anything. We talked talk about this. Um, there was a fire that in the seventies that they had to move the bell. So if, uh -huh. they, if you're listening, can you confirm that? I was reading something. Couldn't find anything about a fire in the paper though, right? Yeah. I yeah. Did, but I, yeah. I so here's the outside of the church, and there's the bell tower where it would have been. Okay. Check it out. We're gonna walk around over this way now. There's that wind. I apologize for any wind noises. I'll try to speak up over the wind. Get around the corner. This is really cool. They've got a stone here acknowledging when they were organized, January 10th, 1887. So as he said, they just had their birthday not too long ago, 134th. And yeah, we're gonna walk down the side here. And anybody wanna guess what my favorite thing is? Oh, I did, dang it. Oh, look, but it's not even, oh, oh no, this bad. is gonna be good, y'all. This is gonna be good. We're gonna go down into the crawl space area. It's kind of like a, like a bunker. It's like almost like a, a cellar or yeah. a, a... I did, yeah, I had I had um, my headlamp and I left it upstairs. Wait but, so, okay, look at this. Check out some of this old brick here. Okay, let's see. I did not come down here the other day, so this is my first time exploring in here too. Um, see if we can see anything that... There's an old piece of wood. Here, I found you a light bulb. What? Is it historic? Dang. No. <laughs> light bulb moment. Uh, Let's see if I can see it. Yeah. Wrappers. Wrappers. Let's see. What's back here? Nope. So, what I would love to do at some point is get to the other side of this brick wall where I know there's a crawl space. Well, can we see? See, they've done some renovation, so. But look at this wood beam right here. Look at that. There's a good. Oh, yeah, there's a nice, but yeah, there's a good old wooden beam right there. That's a big, thick one. Oh, yeah. I mean, he goes. Yeah. Down. And he comes, there's another one that comes across. Uh huh. Okay, yeah. Look, the beam's there. So I love seeing how these things are constructed. Is the audio down? Oh, okay, good. Sorry, Jen. <laughs> User error. Glad it's not just me. Um, yeah, so, you know, someday, if uh, if and when we ever get some spare time and I can kind of crawl around the, um, the crawl space on the other side of this brick wall, then I, what? Why am I doing your job? Because you have the spotlight. Are you finding anything? Well, I'm like looking at this, I'm trying to look over here and then there's like this board in here. And I'm like, what's oh. the deal with that? And then it's boarding up a hole. Uh, it's, oh, and they knew you were here. Yeah. Oh, what's up there? Anything? Uh, it looks like a pipe and the floor Some would more, be. Yeah. Oh wait, but no. Okay, the original floor. Original floor looks to be gone. Actually, yeah. if that's if that's going into the church over there, that uh, um. So. The original flooring might be gone or some of it at least well i still think you need to come back and really dig in, in that i do i space. think if we get in the cross piece and start digging we might be able to find some artifacts of uh you know maybe some um some offertory money <laughs> that fell through the cracks you know you never know you never know <laughs> uh vicky said the original bell was moved during the renovation not certain of the date okay okay thanks so um actually i'm gonna stay right here because the wind's kind of blocked 
So um, that's pretty much it for us today, I think. You got Whoa, else? I almost took a step back oh there. Oh my wasn't... gosh. That's why I don't go in these crawl spaces with her. <laughs> You gotta be a professional. Eat it. You have to be a professional basement explorer. I have a degree in basement exploring. Um, <laughs> no, I again, guys, like this one has been so fascinating. I was so excited. I found that stuff about Thomas Allen. We really want to um, develop that. Yes, and, absolutely. And really do something with that rather than just let it lie fall fallow in a um, in an archival folder somewhere. You know, I really think that. Um, well, his moving his story. Well, not only that, the, one of the other thirty th original thirty-three was um, Turner, Reverend Bishop, Bishop, Bishop Turner. Excuse me, Bishop Turner. That um, he was over at Turner Chapel, and so he was also one of the other original thirty-three. So what I'd like to do is go through every one of those men and see if any of the rest of them have any Cobb County ties. Because yeah, that's possible. Even though mm -hmm. at the time they were serving as representatives in the um, in the government. Even though they weren't doing so as a representative of Cobb County, they were all in different places, they still had very deep ties to our county and mm -hmm. are part of our history here. So we need to remember them and, and honor them somehow. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so we need our own original 33 statue here, in my opinion. You know? There's a place nearby our building that needs a statue. Oh. Just saying. <gasps> we have an empty pedestal. Let's start it now, folks. Let's do it. Let's get it Let's going. Let's do it. That's I, we, we can't force um, our bosses to do anything because that's how the world works. But you might be able to suggest to the city of Marietta that yeah. they want that. You know? Um, yeah. So. That'd be great. Well, thank you all for watching today. Um, next week, we will be at another location talking about some of our black history here in Marietta. and um, Inside, please. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we might have to. Oh, yes. We'll actually... Vicki, absolutely. That I forgot. Oh, um, yes. If anybody is a fan of Dr. Henry Louis Gates, like we are on PBS and Finding Your Roots and everything, his um, documentary on the black church will be coming out, I believe it's the 15th of yes. this month. And that was kind of one of the reasons why we wanted to do a black church first. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, because we, that's coming We do out. hope to, um, we are hoping this month to get over into Zion. Yeah. I, I've got that in the works. I just haven't made the phone call yet. I will. And so we probably will be going over to Zion's church as well. Um, and in the future, even outside of February, you know, we yeah. want to cover all the churches, um, and, you know, and all the historic churches in the county. So, um, especially Marietta. So, yeah. All right, guys. Have a great Thanks weekend. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye.